Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Fly Out, uh, one of my new favorite games. I've been having so much fun with this game, I literally cannot put it down. Uh, but today we're going to be talking about something that seems very simple on the surface, but actually is not simple at all. In this video, we're going to discuss the first of a three-part series, which is how to build something that flies in Fly Out. Let's get right into it. Now this video is intended for anyone. I don't care if you've never played a game like this before, if you've never built a plane before, I don't care if you know what a plane is or not. We're gonna teach you how to build something that flies. I'm not gonna call it a plane because maybe it's not a plane, it's just something that flies. But we're gonna teach you no matter what prior knowledge level you have. So even if you're completely new to the game, don't worry, we're gonna get you to the point where you're building your very own flying machines. First, I just want to say uh, thank you guys so much for all the support on the last video. I love to see people engaging with the content I make, so that was really great. Uh, keep that up if you can. Also, I called him Bill. His name is Jimmy. I apologize, community. He is Jimmy now. We will call him Jimmy. Uh, but yeah, let's get started on our little tutorial. So first, I want to go over Flyout's interface and all the different tools, features, and things that we have going on here. It can be a little confusing at first, but it's really not that bad. So top left is your usual hotbar. You've got your menu, camera, settings, craft name. This is how to save things, obviously. More settings and the great green play button that lets you take this thing to the runway. Now for the actual building part. So on the bottom here, we have a cursor icon, a plus icon, and a paint icon. So the cursor lets you select and move stuff, uh, and you can move it using this triad here, red, green, and blue. You can also move things using the local position stuff up here. So for example, let's say you want to center your fuselage, which you usually do. You set your X to zero, you hit enter. There you go. You set your Y to zero too, because you feel like it. There you go. That doesn't look quite right, so we're going to go ahead and drag that back up a little ways. Uh, but yeah, so that is how you do the basics. You can also edit rotation here. Let's say I want to rotate my part with the triad. I go down in the bottom right here to this thing. Looks just like our green, red, and blue triad here. We click it, and now we're in rotating mode. Very nice, very nice. If I click it again, we're in scaling mode. Wee! Scaling is fun. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Now of note, there is no control Z in this game. Uh, at least not that I've figured out yet. So be careful of what you do. If you want to change these values without using the triad and you want to use just numbers instead, you can use this top right box here. So let's just get our scale back to 111 like we want. There we go. Now I bet you're wondering, how the heck do I add parts? The plus button right down here. You've got all different categories on the left here. Fuselage, lift. Fuselage is obviously just cockpits and fuselages, which we'll get into in a minute. And then there's lift, which is wings, tailorons, all that good stuff. Power, so all your different engines. Intakes, which I believe are purely cosmetic at this point. Propellers, if you're doing a propeller plane. Wheels, because most planes land. <laughs> Weapons, which is a whole nother animal that we won't even be touching in this video. Joints for the fancy people. Uh, electric systems, most of which, which are cosmetic. Some interior stuff, again, cosmetics, fuel pods, and all that good stuff. Okay, so to add a part, let's say I've already put this fuselage here. Let's say I want to add a whole nother fuselage, or better yet, a cockpit. So I'm under fuselage. I want to add the cockpit mark one. So I click on that. And now I have this part here. So you see this, there's a green dot at the back of this cockpit. That is our connector. You'll also see there's a green dot on the fuselage. Those two things will snap together and that allows us to connect. So I've now connected this cockpit to our craft. Now Jimmy here is not in the part of the craft that he's supposed to be. So we're gonna click on Jimmy and we're gonna move him. Oh, actually, we're going to move the craft because Jimmy doesn't move. And we're going to make it so that Jimmy is sitting right there in the cockpit, right about where he should be. Of course, there's no need for that. It's just a choice we make. Uh, and I'm actually going to get rid of this fuselage section. So you might be wondering, this is attached. How the heck do I separate it? So if you click on that fuselage section and then the up arrow down here. Well, actually, I seem to have done it wrong. 
Yeah, the up arrow disconnects a part from another part. So now I've disconnected this cockpit here. Oh, it actually looks like I've broken the game. <laughs> uh, technical difficulties, be right back. Okay, so demonstrating what I was trying to show before, got our fuselage part here. Uh, if we want to just move it freely with our cursor, we press the up arrow, and now it is attached to our cursor, and we can just do whatever we want with it. You'll also notice when I go to place this on top of Jimmy, two of them appear. The reason for that being is we have symmetry mode turned on. So in the bottom right here, you see these two triangles back to back. If I click that once, symmetry mode is now off. I will only get one of these no matter where I put it. If I turn it on, symmetry mode is on. So if I want to delete this part altogether, I just stick it in the trash can right down here. But we're actually going to want to start with a cockpit. So let's get our cockpit here. Put it, actually I don't really like, let's do this one. Yeah, that's kind of nice. You can just put it wherever. Nice, nice. Looking good, Jimmy. That's fine. Now I want to position this in the center, so I set my X to y, uh, zero. Not set my X to Y. Move the cockpit a little bit. Eh, make it look nice. There we go. He's in there. Perfect. Now if I wanted to attach something to the back of that, I can grab my fuselage here, and I can just stick it right on there. Just like this. So you'll see now I can only move this with the triad. It's not attached. If I actually want to attach it, hit the up arrow. There we go. If I want to detach it, up arrow again, and she's free. Now the coolest part about Flyout, or one of them, so this fuselage is actually made up of sections, and you can edit those sections to have any shape you want. So if we hit Open Fuselage Editor here on the right, Give it a minute, and now we have our fuselage editor open. So here is the actual fuselage we're looking at. Also, I am moving the camera like this with the middle mouse button. So right now we have section zero, which is our like root segment, and then we have section one. Let's say we wanted to add another section. We click extrude fuselage here, and you see now two has appeared. We use our triad, we pull that out. Now let's say we want to go back to editing section one. We just click on the one. Now let's say I want to make section one more square than circular. For one thing, I'm going to check X mirror and I'm going to actually check Y mirror too so we can mirror everything. And I can literally just click and drag these points to wherever I want, which I think is the coolest thing. So there we go, we've made our rough little square. And you'll notice that section one of our fuselage has changed to reflect that. So what we could do now is, let's say we wanted to make this square part a little longer. We're going to take our section two. We'll pull it out a little bit further so we have some space. Go back to one and click extrude. Oh, I actually can't do that. Okay, well, that's, that's a little goofy of me. Um... But yeah, let's just, let's pull the two out. Say we want it to be circular again here. We hit extrude, pull it out a little more. And let's say we want this one to be like, I don't know, some fancy looking like weird shape thing. Uh, take this in. Yeah, so you can see this reflects this and it sort of blends the fuselage to get all these sections together. And let's add one more section, section four here, and pull that out. We can, using this handy dandy load tool here, we can just load ourselves a nice circle and sort of put these points back on that circle in case we mess it up. So let's put all those back there. Okay. Doesn't have to be perfect, just good enough. Uh, and then we can actually go and attach this to our plane here. So what I'm gonna do is close this editor. Uh, so I hit quit, that closes that. I grab my fuselage, my pointer, hit the up arrow. Okay, it's actually gonna make me flip it around, isn't it? Yeah, okay. Let's see here, can I get it to connect this way? This is where a little bit of the jank comes into play. Um, Oh yeah, there we go. It was connected there for a sec. Yep. Oh, and I clicked out of the game. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, well, so we're just going to actually turn it around because that's that's how we're going to do it today. So let's use our rotation here. I believe that's going to be our X. 90, 180. Will this work? I'm not sure. Yep, there we go. So it's attached. Now you'll notice there's a difference in this cross section and the cockpit cross section. So let's say I wanted to make those match, which you probably would if you're a sane person. If we go back into our fuselage editor and we go to zero, we click on zero, and now all we're gonna do is scale this. So I happen to know from experimenting that the correct scale here is 0.6, or at least close enough to the correct scale, is 0.6 and 0.8. And that'll give you a shape that is pretty close to what the fighter's fuselage is. So now we have a nice, I mean, it's not nice <laughs> by any means, but it's a flush edge and we have our fuselage finished. So now we're gonna talk about wings and some other basics of making something that flies. So it may not seem like it, but at first glance, uh, it might seem pretty hard to make a plane or anything that flies and is controllable. But actually it's really easy and we're gonna break it down into a couple super simple steps. Uh, so first let's just, we're just gonna put a fuselage in here. Doesn't matter what it is, I'm gonna turn off symmetry mode here and I'm gonna stick it on Jimmy there and we're just gonna center that up. So I'll center it there. So you can see this yellow and black dot here, that is our center of mass. That is the, literally, the center of mass of our craft. So if I click this blue dot, that is gonna be our center of lift. Those two things are very important for any air going craft. Now in order to see our center of lift, we're gonna have to add some wings. So without getting too complicated, literally the most bare bones thing possible under the lift category, we just grab a wing. We turn symmetry mode back on with this button in the bottom right because you always want your lifting surfaces to be symmetrical. And we put our wings on our craft here. Now you can see the wings themselves will also change the center of mass because the wings have mass. Now when I put those down, now you see our center of lift. So the rule of thumb for most aircraft to be able to fly is that your center of lift, the blue circle, should be very close to, but just behind, the center of mass. Uh, the reason for this is it gives the plane inherent stability. For example, when the plane pitches down, if the center of lift is behind the center of mass, the plane wants to tend to maintain a stable angle and not pitch further down and enter some kind of a death spiral. There are some craft where the center of lift here is in front of the center of mass, Notably, a lot of fighter planes do it that way because it does give you some maneuverability, but that requires some really advanced fly-by-wire juju. So the rule of thumb for you is blue circle behind yellow circle, but not too far. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a very basic aircraft and we're gonna do a little time lapse of it. And then we can use that aircraft to explain some of the rest of what you need to know about how to make your pile of garbage fly. So I've got us a very basic fuselage here. I, I wanna stress again, this is definitely not pretty, but it's something. And that, that's what matters when you play a game like this. Your first designs are always gonna look horrible. That's fine, everyone's do. Don't worry about it. We are now gonna discuss wings and how you can make yours cool. So we have our wings here. I've just stuck them on the fuselage directly out of the parts bin. Now if we hit wing editor, it's similar to the fuselage editor, but slightly different. 
So you'll see now we have these pink dots on our wing. We can use these to a tweak if we click on one and then we can use our triad to tweak where our wings are. So in some sense, what you're doing when you do this is you're tweaking the location of your center of lift relative to your center of gravity. And if you see where it is now, you can see our center of lift is just behind our center of gravity. Now in this particular case, it is quite a bit above it. I'm actually gonna fix that by moving the wing down so it's a little closer, but plenty of planes have this sort of a configuration. It is stable, uh, it's not always the best. I mean, different configurations are better for different things. That is a very, very much too complicated for this video. But what you can see here is when I drag this wing node out, you can see the wing actually, it does this interesting like distortion which I think makes for a really cool shaped wing around this other node. Uh, but I'm actually gonna drag this out and back and then I'm gonna do the same with this node here. So we've got our center of lift there. Yeah, I want them a little bit bigger than that. That's kind of a fat wing though. There we go. Um, yeah, okay, so we, we get a nice delta going. I'm a big fan of delta wings, so you'll see me using them constantly. All right, so center lift is a little further up than I want it to be. So I can just sweep these back and you can see the blue ball there is moving as I change the wing configuration. Now the difficult thing is making the wings bigger also affects your center of gravity. So you need to find a balance between making your center of lift in the right position and also keeping your center of gravity in the right position. So this is pretty good looking. So when I'm done, I hit the checkbox, click on my wings, and I want to move them down so our blue ball is a little closer to the yellow one. So I'm going to grab our triad here, move them down. There we go. I'm not sure why the center of mass just changed locations, but that's an easy fix. You can see how the center mass and center lift change as we move our triad here. Let's just set them down right there. Okay, it's really funky looking, but whatever. Now we're gonna add some very important features to our wings, including control surfaces and a leading edge. So you may have noticed right now, the front of this wing is just a brick. You don't have to be an engineer to realize that's not very good for aerodynamics. So wings have these wonderful things called leading edges. So if we click on our wing here, go over to the right side, here it says leading edge. We click on none, we click on standard. Now we have pointy edge. Think about it, if you had a block of cheese, would you cut it with a hammer or a knife? We're gonna cut it with a knife. So we're gonna add our leading edge here. You're also gonna notice, however, that that did affect our center of lift. So if I take them off, our center of lift is further back. If I put them back on, it's further forward. That has to do with the aerodynamics of the wing changing. Um, fancy stuff, no need for it here. The other thing is our trailing edge. So we're gonna hit standard. That gives us this back edge where instead of just a square edge on the back again, which basically causes a low pressure area in the back that causes air to swirl into it and become turbulent, which is bad. Uh, we got our trailing edge, which is a nice smooth tapered point. Eventually, we're gonna convert these into control surfaces. Uh, so that's actually good. So pretty much every wing you make, you're gonna to wanna to have a leading and a trailing edge. Now you'll also notice with your wings, you have an option to turn them into fuel tanks by checking this box, selecting different kinds of fuel and how much you're gonna put in the wings. Now keep in mind, if you do that, as the plane uh, progresses through its flight and the fuel out of the wings drains, your center of mass here is gonna change location because the mass in the wings is going to be burnt and sent out the back of the engines. So just keep that in mind if you choose to do that. Now, since this is a basics beginner tutorial, we're just gonna go with the basic plane configuration, which involves three types of control surfaces. First, you have your aileron, which controls your roll, and then you have your elev not elevon, elevator, which controls your pitch, so that's the nose up and down. And then you have your rudder, which controls the nose left to right, also known as yaw. So to set those up, the first thing we're gonna need to do is add a tail to this plane. So I'm gonna go to the tailor on here, 
which there's this is not necessarily in fact let's do it with the wing just to prove so turn symmetry mode off go ahead and put your tail on top of the plane anywhere it doesn't really matter where uh, and rotate it along the y-axis I believe 90 nope that's not right I always mix these axes up let's try the Z 90 yeah there we go okay and then in our position we're gonna set the X to 0 so it's centered in the plane now if we open the wing editor we can kind of make it look like a tail so we drag this back a little bit and maybe to put this forward and now it looks like a tail perfect now we're gonna actually position this where we want it on the plane so let's bring it back a bunch and let's bring it down doesn't matter too much doesn't have to be perfect just get it good enough now we're gonna come on back here we're gonna add a leading edge to make it nice and smooth and a trailing edge eventually these trailing edges are gonna become our control surfaces but we'll get there in a minute uh, so let's see what we're gonna do next okay let me think about how I want to do this so since this plane that we're building doesn't have a tail we're gonna to have to do some funny business with the control surfaces but it's really simple and you'll understand it no problem once we get into it so what we're gonna do now is tell which control surfaces on the plane to do what so for starters we're gonna click on our little rudder here and you're not gonna click on the actual rudder itself so the center portion you're gonna to wanna to click on the back portion, the trailing edge, and you'll see it gets highlighted, and you can see this blue thing here. That is basically the travel of the rudder. So it's telling us it can go left, it can go right. So now what we do, on the right here in the inputs box, we tell the rudder what we want it to do when we give the plane certain inputs. So a rudder should control the yaw back and forth of the plane. So what we're gonna do is we go to add response, we click yaw, and for yaw, I'm just gonna put 20, which means that when there is a yaw input, the rudder will respond to that input. Now this value, I don't know exactly what it does, but bigger value means more response. I put everything on 20 generally and then tune it from there. Uh, now, we have our yaw covered, we need to cover pitch and roll. So with these, we click on our trailing edge here, you can see it's quite a bit bigger. Um, and we go to our responses. So the first thing we'll do is pitch. So pitch is again, the nose of the plane goes up, the nose of the plane goes down. So we go to add response, pitch. Now we wanna map this to when we give positive input, we want positive uh, reaction out of the control surface. So we put positive 20. Now uh, it's not symmetrical, so we also need to add this one it didn't automatically just copy that over. So remember to add it to both. We hit pitch, we say 20. Now the confusing part, slightly confusing. We also need to add our roll controls now. So if this is the plane, it goes like this and it goes like that. So we click on our control surface again. We hit add response, we hit roll. So let's say we wanna go left. We're gonna want this control surface to tilt upward. So what we're gonna put is a positive value for tilting upward. Now on the other side, we're gonna add the same response for roll, but we need it to be opposite, so negative 20. What that does is when we give a roll input to the plane, so that's like you know A, D, or whatever the control is on your keyboard, one flap goes up, the other flap goes down, plane rolls. So honestly, that is the basics of control surfaces. You can get much fancier very quickly if you want to. Um, again, if you had a tail, you would not have your pitch and roll on the same control surface. You would have another set of control surfaces called elevators, and those would control your pitch. Uh, however, I like these delta wing planes, so this is what we're gonna do for this particular video. So now that we've got our basic airframe design down, we can start adding the goodies like fuel and landing gear. So first we'll add fuel because fuel is heavy, it's gonna affect your center of gravity location. So we hit the plus button, we go again to the fuselage column here, and we're gonna, cl we're gonna click on drop tank. Now one of the great things about Flyout is that the entire game, for the most part, is procedural. 
So a drop tank is more or less a fuel tank. It's intended to be dropped off the craft, as the name implies. But if we click on our fuel tank here, once we've put it on the plane, you see we got a whole bunch of sliders here. And we can basically change anything we want about this fuel tank and by proxy its capacity using these sliders. So that's pretty cool. We're not gonna mess around with it in this video because we're just trying to demonstrate the features. But notice placing these significantly changes my center of gravity. In fact, it's, it affects it a lot. Um, can fill it with more or less fuel. You can see how that affects our CG. Now think about when these are empty and maybe you're drifting towards the runway, that's where your CG is gonna be. But when you are just taking off, it's gonna be all the way over there. That's quite a bit of variation. Generally, you wanna to try to minimize that. But again, this is just a demonstration plane. So those are our fuel tanks. Looking pretty good. We're gonna keep this sharp, maybe cut. Eh, that looks kinda of lame. Sharp? Yeah, sure. Actually, I think rounded looks a little better. And you know what? Let's paint them green. Why not? <laughs> oh, it's so ugly. I love it. Okay, so now we've got our fuel tanks. Every plane needs landing gear. And if not to land, at least to take off. So under LNG, we click on our landing gear here. Obviously, you're going to want a rear pair and a front pair, or a, f a single front one in most planes. Now, the thing is, in order to take off well, you want your landing gear to be not too far behind your center of mass. So if I put them all the way back here, the plane is going to need to exert quite a lot of force to pitch up off the ground. If I put them right here, it only needs to exert a little force to move the nose off the ground. The reason for that is the moment arm created by the landing gear and blah, 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 engineering nonsense. Let's just stick them on the wings and call it a day. We'll put them right here also helps to spread them out, generally makes the plane more stable, prevents it from tipping side to side. Is that even enough clearance? It's not. But thanks to procedural everything, we can change uh, all the stuff about those. There we go. Landing gear, of course, are retractable, so don't worry about that too much. Uh, so let's get those in place. And then, of course, we're gonna want one on the front. So I'll grab another landing gear. We're going to turn symmetry mode off. And we're going to stick that bad boy right there. And make sure to click on it afterwards and center it up. There we go. Okay, now you'll notice these are still... They're not quite low enough. Hmm. Uh, I don't like that. <laughs> Can make it beefy. Holy cow. I love, I love this. I love that they were like, oh yeah, we're going to put sliders for everything because it just gives you so much creative freedom. And I love when games do that. Yeah, you know, I should probably relocate those, but whatever. Let's just uh, call it a day. Bring this guy up. Sometimes they're a little hard to select. Okay, let's bring it up into the fuselage. Um, okay, now the most important part of the plane, the engine. So we hit the plus button. We go to our power. You can see you've got a lot of different options here. You got electric motors, piston engines, ramjets, turbines. Very quickly rundown of each. Electric motors, gearboxes, piston engines, those are all to be used with propellers and they use, basically it's an implement to spin a propeller. A turbine is an entirely different kind of power source uh, and is not intended to be used with a propeller, at least in the sense that you're probably thinking about. Turbines are good from zero to Mach 1. Ramjets will not even operate at a zero speed. Uh, they have to get up to a certain speed to begin operating, and then they are very efficient above Mach 1 at supersonic speeds. For this plane, because simplicity, we'll be using turbines. And I'm gonna, actually gonna mount them right in the wings here. Make sure to turn symmetry mode back on. Now again, everything is customizable. So if I click on my turbine here, I can change everything about it. There's all this fancy nonsense. Uh, but this, the sliders that I care about generally are the diameter of the turbine. More diameter equals more power, as you can tell. <laughs> uh, and then we can actually change certain components like the fan, for example, here it says low bypass. I can change that to high bypass. 
We get this big honking thing. We don't need that for right now. Uh, the combustor, I again, I couldn't tell you what these do. Uh, probably a quick Google would tell you what they did, but I'm simply too lazy to do that today. Uh, power turbine, very nice. Uh, that's fine. Afterburner. <laughs> I don't think we need an afterburner on this thing. Uh, yeah, so basically you can change everything there is to change about these engines. There's a whole guide on the Discord server about specifically the engines, if you want more info on that. One big point of note here is that we do not need these engines to be on the outside of the plane in order for them to function, at least in this current update. So I could tuck this away neatly inside of the fuselage, and we would be just fine. No problems. So, uh, spools. Fun. Three spools. Two spools. Cool. So we'll just make them nice and big. Hopefully that's enough power. Um, and I'm going to sling them under the wings near the fuel tanks. There we go. Now the final thing is, and I'm pretty sure this is just cosmetic, but I could actually be wrong. You can put intakes on your turbines if you want. So for example, square inlets. See our little green node there? You can stick that on there, and I believe we can scale this. Yeah, so if we switch our triad to scale, can scale up like that. Scale sideways. Nice. That makes it look a good bit nicer. Uh, not really, but <laughs> whatever. So now you've got your plane, and it has everything it needs to fly. It's time for the fun part, the part that everybody loves. We're going to test this thing. So obviously before you test, there's a chance the game will crash. So you're going to hit your save button here. Type in your name of the craft down here. We'll call it the Silly Mobile because this thing is straight up goofy. Hit save and your craft is saved. Now I'm going to hit the green play button and in we go. Uh, the map is huge. I believe it is procedurally generated. Um, there is weapons capability added to the planes. I think eventually the idea is to be able to fly missions with your own planes, kind of like how Kerbal Space Program lets you do missions with planes that you create. Oh, geez, she's sitting on the ground. We got a lowrider here. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to have to fix those landing gear. Your throttle is controlled by control and shift. You can see it in the bottom left here. And I believe this is our fuel consumption per second. Um, then G controls your landing gear. So I press G and they go up. It's not like they were doing anything anyway. <laughs> okay. Now, if we look at our control surfaces. So the way that I have my keys mapped, I'll actually show you. So I go to controls here. Yeah. So here they are. Pitch up is S, pitch down is W, all this stuff. I switched yaw, so A and D, with roll, which is Q and E. Um, but you can do whatever you want. That's just how I like it. So now I'm going to give it yaw input, and you'll see the rudder moves, even though that rudder is way undersized for the size of a plane. Now if I give it roll input, those move. If I give it pitch input, those move. That's what we want to see. Now let's spin up our turbines and see if she'll move. Oh yeah, plenty of power. Although whether or not, oh, whether or not we're gonna be able to keep it going down the runway is uh, anybody's guess here. <laughs> oh okay, we're getting it. We're getting a little bit of lift here. See. Anyone with a brain would just go back to the hangar and revise the plane to the point where it flew okay and didn't have to do this nonsense. But I'd rather just be stubborn about it. All right, so to take off, you simply pitch the nose up once you reach a speed of about 100 meters per second. It's going to vary plane to plane, but that's just fine. And you'll be in the air. Now, first thing you want to do is retract your gear. So hit G to retract your landing gear. Now you'll notice, if I let off the controls, it's pretty stable, but it's gradually pitching further and further down. So our next job, oh boy, <laughs> our next job is going to be to trim the controls. So trim basically sets the idle position of our control surface 
so that it, when we're not putting any control input at it, say it's tilted a little bit up. So for example, you can see when we're not putting in control input, this plane pitches down. Actually seems to be destabilizing for some reason. Um, that's a little funky. Oh, it's because of the wind, maybe? Let's turn into the wind. Okay, oh, jeez. Oh boy, she's unwieldy, she is. I'm always building unwieldy things. All right, yeah, there we go. So when this plane pitches, or when we're not putting input onto it, it pitches down. To trim it, you, you hold down the X key and press the input that you want. So I'm pressing S. Now you can see in the bottom here, our pitch has changed to negative 11%, which means with no control input, those surfaces are pointed negative 11%. It's kind of hard to see here, but they're pointed upward. So you want, to, oh boy, I'm pulling too many Gs. You basically wanna do your trims to the point where your craft, if you don't give it any control input, is flying nice and straight. So I don't know why this thing has decided it doesn't wanna fly straight, but it's fine. Uh, I'm trying to trim the surfaces here a little bit. This actually just wants to go straight up into the sky, I guess. It's also really, really slow. So 147 meters per second. Um, so let's do, there we go, is that right? Ah, doesn't wanna, doesn't wanna fly exactly straight, but that's what you're gonna wanna do. You wanna get your trim values in the bottom left here to a point where you're comfortable with them. And then you can basically just fly, just cruise. Another cool feature of this game is it has autopilot so if i click in the bottom right here click autopilot say when i want to get up to 8,000 feet and go mach 0.8 uh what's our current heading 260 we'll just say 260 hit engage she takes control we don't have to do a thing now clearly the ai is having some issues controlling this and i wonder is it only 95 percent yeah huh she seems unstable. You're gonna get planes like this every once in a while. It's gonna take a while for you to figure out exactly what's wrong with them. Don't be discouraged. Trial and error is king here. Uh, I'm actually gonna, let's take this out of autopilot. There we go. Oh boy. Okay, down to the ground with you. Now it's stable all of a sudden. Doesn't make any sense. Anyways, that is a very basic tutorial for flyout. Tried to cover the whole process from start to finish of design, the basic controls, what you need to know to basically get up and running with this game. It's much harder, it seems much harder than it actually is. Uh, don't let yourself become discouraged from playing it. Games like this are great because they let you trial and error things without costing millions of dollars. For example, I can just do this. <laughs> No problem. Everything's fine. Even Jimmy survived, and he's actually landed perfectly upright. What do you think about that, Jimmy? He seems fine. So anyway, I'm going to continue making videos on Flyout. This will be the only tutorial video for a bit until I get better at the game. Uh, but we're going to start making some real craft. Uh, and we're also going to try to make certain craft to achieve certain objectives. Say high speed, maybe highest altitude, all sorts of cool stuff like that. But there will be lots more flyout content coming to the channel in the near future. But in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you have a wonderful day.